What's up everybody, I am Mongoose, you are awesome, and I told you fucks a long time ago that I was going to make a cooking show, and I finally sat down and went through the footage. No, I'm not changing the channel to a cooking channel, I just thought this would be fun and I kind of needed a break from the Paragon videos for a little bit. So today, I'm going to teach you how to make panty dropper pasta. I call it panty dropper pasta because if you make it for your girl, or, or man, whatever, magical butterflies will appear, float down to remove her panties, and place them gently in the palm of your hand. We'll start off by prepping the chicken. It doesn't have to be chicken, it can be anything that's kind of light in flavor. Um, shrimp, human, fish, whatever. Just don't use beef or lamb. I like to use about a quarter cup of olive oil in a Ziploc bag, then chop up about two cloves of garlic, add a generous pinch of salt, toss in a couple boneless skinless chicken breasts, and throw it in the fridge. By the time you're done with the rest, it'll be ready to cook. Just make sure you wash your nasty fucking chicken hands before you go doing anything else. Now we're going to make the noodles. Yes, from scratch. Don't you dare go and fucking buy some noodles for this. Making the noodles by hand is what makes the panties drop. She'll be like, are you making the pasta from scratch? And you'll be like, hell yeah. Then she'll get all moist. Pour out about two cups of flour. You don't have to be ultra precise. This isn't baking. Dump it directly onto the work surface. This will force you to mix the wet and dry ingredients thoroughly. If you don't, you'll have a fucking mess to deal with. Use your measuring cup to make a little crater in the middle of the flour. Now crack three eggs into the same measuring cup. Do it one-handed if you're a fucking boss like me. Pour them into the crater, break the yolks, and start mixing them up. If you really want to church this shit up, you can add some dry herbs at this point. I would suggest basil or oregano. About a pinch will do you. I like to use marjoram, not because it's great or anything, I just always use it because of the Dragonlance Chronicles. If you've ever read them, you'll remember that Raceland used marjoram for his cough. Now take your time and mix this well. As you mix, pull the flour from the sides into the eggs. You want the flour to fully incorporate into the wet ingredients. It's going to take some time, but it will be well worth it. Now is a good time to mention that this recipe makes plenty of food for two people. If you and or your girl are big eaters, you can either double up on all the ingredients or consider going on a fucking diet. It really is a lot of food. You're going to have a lot of flour left over at the end, that's fine. Just start scooping it in and mixing everything together with your hands. Eventually you have formed a nice soft dough. Start kneading this for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's a good time to take your shirt off and show off those non-existent gamer muscles. If the dough feels really stiff and kind of breaks when you try and knead it, add just a touch of water. If the dough is super soft and sticks to the work surface, add a little flour. After you're done kneading it, oil up the ball of dough with some olive oil and stick it in a bowl to proof. Cover up the bowl with a wet paper towel, set it off to the side while you work on the chicken. Preheat a cast iron skillet to medium heat. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, fucking go buy one, they're awesome. They get better as they age, meaning they make great family heirlooms. It's in my will that whichever one of my kids can beat the other in a game of Street Fighter 2 will get Uncle Jesse here. For real though, you can use an inferior skillet if you wish. Now there's no need to grease up the skillet, the olive oil on the chicken will be fine as long as the skillet is hot enough. The main reason the food sticks to pans is because people don't have that shit hot enough. Cook the chicken for about 10 minutes. The internal temp for fully cooked chicken is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Basically, once you cut it open, if it's still pink inside, don't fucking eat it. Cook it some more. After it's cooked for about 5 minutes, flip it, cover it, and start on some new shit. It's time to form the noodles. Flour up your work surface and grab a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, a nice big heavy beer mug works great. Nine times out of ten, if you're living in a house that doesn't have a rolling pin, there will be a giant beer mug available. Toss some flour down on the work surface to prevent sticking and start rolling. You can also use a pasta machine for this. I actually have one, but I prefer to use the roller. Keep rolling and flipping to achieve a basically rectangular shape that is as thin as you can get it. If you don't have enough space to do the entire ball of dough, cut it in half and form two balls. Now that you have it where you want it, cut the rectangle into strips using a pizza cutter going to make for some sloppy looking noodles, just say it's rustic style. You can get away with anything looking like shit by saying it's rustic. For example, my rustic good looks. Anyway, don't worry about it if the noodles are all different sizes and end up tapering all kinds of different ways. It all makes a turd in the end, dude, don't sweat it. Your chicken should be done by now. Take it out of the pan and set it aside on a cutting board to let it rest. It'll continue cooking a bit. Do not, I fucking repeat, do not cut into it. You need to let the chicken rest and finish cooking before you slice it or you lose all them juices. Keep that pan hot because we're going to make the sauce in it. Also, keep the little burned chicken bits in there, it adds flavor. Start with about 4 tablespoons of butter. Real butter, not margarine. You need the fat content from butter for the sauce to come together. 
Slice up some more garlic, however much you want really, but I like to go with two cloves. Add them to the melted butter in the pan. Once the garlic starts to go translucent with a little brown around the edges, add about four tablespoons of flour. You want equal parts flour and butter. Start mixing it up with a wire whisk. I like to use a metal one so I can scrape up some of those chicken bits I was talking about. You want this to turn into a granular sandy consistency. If the first batch of flour doesn't do it, add a little more until it looks like this. Now it's ready for some milk. I like to use half and half. About a cup of it, but I add a little at a time and stir it up as you go. Once everything is mixed together, add some Parmesan cheese. Use real Parmesan cheese. If you put that processed green can bullshit into my recipe, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Thank you, Liam Neesons. Keep mixing this until it thickens. Use a spoon. If it coats the spoon instead of just running off immediately, it's good to go. If it seems too thin, just cook it a little bit longer. If it's uh, too thick, add a little bit more milk. Now add your pasta to the pot of boiling salted water I forgot to tell you about. Fresh pasta like this cooks fast, like a minute and it's done. Don't let it just sit there and boil. You'll end up with a chewy ass mess. Pour the pasta through a colander to strain off the water. Add it directly to the sauce. Do not add the sauce to the pasta. That's some Bush League amateur shit. Give it a good mix with some tongs. You can add veggies to the dish if you like, or you can just go straight pasta and protein. For this one, I steamed up some snow peas and carrots. It's really up to you. If you don't know how to steam vegetables, go watch another video or some shit. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Now that the chicken is rested, cut it up. You can slice it however you wish, but I like to make mine nice and pretty by making slices along the bias like this. Use some tongs to plate the pasta, throw your chicken on top, hit it up with some more parmesan, salt and pepper to taste, and you're done. Go ahead and unbuckle your belt because you're about to get a full belly and a blowjob. This is Mongoose signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose.